and welcome to another Saturday morning Stemo Flange. Hello. Hello. What? Baylock, is that you? Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> oh, it's good to have brother back. We're going to have a fun time here. Have no idea where Grundle is today. He texts me in the middle of the night saying, hey, man, are we doing the podcast? I'm in a ditch. <laughs> and I said, uh, sure. And the next morning I text him and say, sure, man, come whenever. And that was uh, about five hours ago. Hey, guys, I'm in a ditch. <laughs> That's a good impersonation. Thanks. All right. Practice. So today we're going to do a mixed bag of stuff. Just a mi- little mixed bag of uh, topics here. Uh, but first, we want to go into those questions you had a few weeks ago. Brian C. asked, uh, top 10 bad movies that have aged well. And that's a good idea. We may do that. Bad movies that have mm. aged well. But you know what? Once a bad movie, I don't watch it again. Do you watch a bad? Would you watch a bad movie again just to see if it's aged well? You know, um, only once... But it, not because of it possibly aging well. It was an accident. I was hanging out with Grundle and uh, Predator 2 came on. And... <laughs> and he also asked, do I have to see the Raid 1 before Raid 2? Uh, uh, as you recall, a few weeks ago, we talked about uh, sequels. And no, you don't, actually, Brian. To be honest, I saw Raid 2 before I saw Raid 1. And it was fine. I mean, you don't. I mean, you miss out maybe on a little bit, maybe, but not that much. So, no, you don't have to, but go ahead and see the Raid 1. I'm sure if the other guys were here, they'd tell you to see Raid 1 first, but I, in my opinion, it doesn't matter. Uh, the Quizmaster, Rory Adams, uh, he wanted to ask us, what's our favorite dinosaur? His is the T-Rex, which is an obvious care, uh, pick, but he didn't care. So, what's your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur? Yeah. Well, to me, dinosaurs are frightening, so it'd be one of the scarier ones, and not a little T-Rex with little bitty arms that can't pick up anything. <laughs> you do like the T-Rex. I would go with the Velociraptor. Oh, okay. Still in front. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a Velociraptor in here. <laughs> I am going to have to go with the Pterodactyl. I used to love the pterodactyl, pterodactyl as a kid. I used to love the pterodactyl as a kid. I had the uh, uh, the Flintstone cereal used to have sell the little the, the, yeah the, the purple little... dinosaur. Well, not the purple no, dinosaur. Like there was a brown one. one. No, oh, the pink one. Well, they weren't colored back then. Oh. Uh, but anyway, uh, no, I used to like that one. And then of course I had a shirt with the pterodactyl on it. And I thought that was so cool when I wore that shirt with the pterodactyl. Until on someone it. was like, "Hey, nice big bird." And my favorite Dinobot was the pterodactyl, even though he hardly ever spoke. Uh. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Eric Schroeder says, what do you guys think of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon getting a sequel after 15 years? You know, Eric, I meant to mention that when we were talking about sequels and that they were doing one. I'm so interested why the heck it took them 15 years to make a sequel. I, it's going to bomb if it comes out in theaters now. I don't think anyone remembers Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon that well. Yeah, they waited way too long to do that. I agree. They'll uh, do well in rents, though, I bet. I'll watch it. No, I'll watch it, but I just can't Not believe in theaters. it. Yeah, well, they're taking too long. I don't know. It depends on what it looks like. But, uh, yeah, that is kind of weird. They waited so long to do a sequel, which, honestly, if they'd have done a sequel a few years after, I think it would have been huge. All right, so uh, mixed bag, as I said today, we're going to talk about top five westerns. Now, it doesn't matter because Grundle said he wasn't big into westerns anyway, so he was going to get in here and talk about something else. That's why we decided on the mixed bag format. But I'm going to give Brother my top five westerns and you folks out there and see if you agree, disagree, you know, whatever you want. Now, I'm going to be honest. I didn't put a single classic western, which is a shame because John Wayne is the king of westerns. And, you know, he deserves to have, you know, a movie in there. She wore a yellow Mm -hmm. ribbon or The Man Who Shot Liberty Balance. There's a, there's a lot of good John Wayne movies, but I said, you know what, I'm going to take that out. I'm going to go with more current uh, westerns, even though there's not that many. And it hurt me to take Magnificent Seven out of my top five, but I decided to go with that. So I'm going with more like 90s and up, maybe. There may be some late 80s in here. I cannot remember. Nope, there's a 70s one in here. So, uh, yeah, so I do have one that's kind of old. But anyway, it still gets in there because it's a modern-day western. Number five. Brother, do you remember Quigley Down Under? Quigley Down Under? Tom Selleck. I don't. You don't? Tom Selleck did a Western. And what? it is fan 
fantastic. It's what? a fantastic western. It's got a lot of comedy in it. It's not campy comedy. So uh, that's a really good one. Anyone who hasn't seen Quigley Down Under, it's well worth your time. Number four is East Meets West in this Jackie Chan lovable movie, Shanghai Noon. I talked a little bit about this a few weeks ago. <laughs> uh, Owen Wilson, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Jackie Chan, great, great movie. Great movie. Uh, so good. Hit the horseshoe and the string, that little, uh, that was the one he got the horseshoe act where he was just slinging oh, around yeah. everything. Unbelievable. Of course, Jackie Chan's always unbelievable, but that's one movie one I just love. One of my favorite love. things about the, all Jackie Chan movies is watching him go through and perform his own stunts. And kind of get caught up in stuff and whack himself with the horseshoe oh, in the yeah. face. After and... the credits and everything. Oh, yeah. After yeah. the credits, they even have, because his English is just not that good. No, it's He's like, you stay away from my babysitter. He was supposed to say sister. He went, and Owen Wilson goes, your babysitter? You're a babysitter. You know, just. Yes, babysitter. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's baby sister. Yeah. yeah. It was hilarious. It's hilarious. But it's. It's a, it's a good. Now, they good have one. sequels of that. How many is there? Three? No, no, no. That one only has another one called Shanghai Nights, where they're in England. Okay. Uh, but Shanghai Noon and Shanghai Nights. I'd love to see another one. Shanghai Morning. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it'd be about, but I'm ready for it. Uh, number three. This is another just straight out campy comedy. Blazing Saddles. Brother, have you seen Blazing Saddles? Blazing Saddles? That's the Gene movie. Wilder? No, no, no. It's an older movie. Older movie. It's Mel Gibson. Not Mel Gibson. Good grief. Mel Brooks? Man, I know I've seen it. I, that, that's such a classic it's, name. I can't think of it. Oh, though. we're watching that together. It's going to be your new favorite movie. It's hilarious. Not very PC, folks, so watch who you show it around. But it never... I think Mikey and I talked about this... Uh, when we were talking about best comedies, because Blazing Saddles was in my honorable mention, I think, but that was a movie that just everyone knows it was made just for to be funny, not to be racist or anything, but it is definitely one of my favorite movies uh, when it comes to westerns. Number two, Lonesome Dove. This is actually cheating a little bit, because it's actually a TV mini-series slash movie thing. I remember my roommate Clay. Do you remember Clay? Yeah. Uh, he made me. We went and rented Lonesome Dove, and I was so embarrassed to rent, rent a movie called Lonesome Dove. And even the guy behind the counter kind of made fun of us. And Clay's like, hey, don't make fun of us. You haven't seen this yet. Hey, hey, it's, nothing good. it's very good. It's good. And I was like, I don't want to see this movie. Love that movie. Robert Duvall, Tommy Lee Jones, two solid actors put together an amazing Performance and Lonesome Dove. Have you seen that one? No, I don't even think I've heard of that. You have? Oh, man. It's when did that good. come out? Uh, I want to say that was 90s. In the 90s. Maybe some early to hmm. mid-90s. It's great. It's great. Great movie. Don't want to give any spoilers here as I'm talking about these. Just want to tell you why I loved them. And then finally is Tombstone. You've seen Tombstone, right? Wow. Is that a Western? That's a Western. Remember, that's Val Kilmore. As uh, Doc Holliday, where he spins the cup instead of the gun. Yeah, because he's cool like that. Uh, Tombstone uh, is probably one of my top movies of all time, too. I just love Tombstone. Val Kilmer's best performance. Brother doesn't watch many new well, new time westerns. Yeah, and, and westerns, uh, I guess kind of like Grundle. I'm not super big on westerns, for right. one. And then, two, they kind of all run together for me for some reason you know yeah. well there, some of the older ones can and whatnot and I, I'll always watch an old western I remember mom would watch a western we'll sit and watch a western with mom uh, the old westerns are always good and I, I do have a lot of appreciation for them fondness for them kind of wish they'd put together a good one you can still do that but Hollywood isn't interested in westerns because they don't have capes and can't fly around or have superpowers now but Tombstone looks pretty cool oh Tombstone is very cool yeah every town has a legend yeah that's, that's it there Tombstone. So it's fantastic, and, and since you're a mustachio, uh, the mustache uh, on there is pretty good, too. So that is a great movie. Now, uh, actually, Mikey did phone in his top five westerns for me, and I'm going to read them off real quick. His honorable mentions were Jonah Hex, you know, because he loves Jonah Hex, and then A Million Ways to Die in the West. 
Because he's a that's big, an honorable mention or that's, that's a top five. That's an honorable uh, mention because uh, well because you know he loves Seth MacFarlane, but he I mean he really really like he can't wait to see Ted too when it comes out. A big big Seth MacFarlane fan. huge Seth MacFarlane fan yeah, yeah. definitely so he those has were that Ted T shirt all the yeah time. he does he wears yeah. it you know like Family Guy big Family Guy fan everything like that. Um, by the way, personally for me, I love Jonah Hex, the comic book. I I was so disappointed about that movie. That movie was such a disappointment to me. All right, so uh, Mikey's top five. Number five is Fievel Goes West. Fievel. The, sequ- the sequel to American Tale, Fievel Goes West. Did you ever see that one? No? I don't know. Okay. He saw, he, he, number four was Lightning Jack. With Crocodile Dundee actor Paul Hogan. Oh, Crocodile Dundee. Yeah, but he did a cowboy movie called Lightning Jack, and that made his number four. And then number three was Wagons East, John Candy's last movie, you know, because, you know, he loves John Candy, and he liked Wagons East. And then number two was The Wild Wild West, because, you know, he loves Will Smith, and he just cannot stop talking about that Wild Wild West movie. All Will Smith, huh? Yeah, he's all Will Smith. And then number one, number one, brother can guess this one, Brokeback Mountain was his number one cowboy movie. So that was Mikey's top five cowboy movies, and so I'm very happy. I mean, if he was here, we'd still be talking about Brokeback Mountain, I'm pretty sure. All right. So now we're going to move in to a topic from last week. I, I cut myself short because I didn't know how much time we had. And I did want to talk, now that I have Brother here again, I wanted to talk about some board games slash card games and kind of finish off that discussion there from last week. Uh, brother, there's a few card games that we used to play back in the day. Uh, spades, hearts, you know, solitaire, battle, go fish. You know, yeah, you, play your, yeah. you play your regular ones. And then we have a special one. This is what I want to ask everyone. Has anyone else out there played Nerds? Nerds is a game kind of like two people playing solitaire, but where you put the aces, anyone can play on that in that area. And our whole family can play some Nerds. In fact, one of my best memories was what a few Christmases ago when we all got together all and had the a table. Nerds off. Eight Nerds car, I mean eight players. Woo, that got a little crazy. Yeah, there's a bunch of Nerds all in one room. But no. <laughs> Yeah, and but that's a fun game. I, m- I remember playing it with my uh, great grandmother back when I was young, and she forgot the name Nerds after a while. She started saying Certs, like the little you know breath mint. Certs, <laughs> Certs, and then I would beat her, and then she got me saying it because I was going Certs, Certs, Mamma, Certs, you know. <laughs> but She's like, uh, here's your candy, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that Christmas candy that all stuck together in the bowl? Yeah, and it Picked all one tastes the whole like bowl disgusting, came out? disgusting sugar anyway. Ooh, yeah, terrible stuff. Anyway, do you remember Millbourne? Millbourne? Yeah, remember? You had to get to 100 kilometers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Millbourne. now he remembers Millbourne. Look yeah, out. That was a sweet game. That was You could play that one over and over and over again. It was so much fun. Yeah, I love that game. Playing that down cards, stopping other people, or, you know, moving yourself around. A great card game. It's fun for the whole family. In fact, our little nephews actually know how to play Millborn, and they do love playing Millborn because mom likes to play Millborn. Yeah, so there's, she there's some card playing dudes. Yeah, and uh, Uno is a classic card game. Uno, that uh, we we played back in the day, and now one of the newer games. It's very popular right now, but my little nephews love it. It's Munchkin. Have you played Munchkin with them? No, I haven't. Munchkin's a super fun game. Uh, fairly simple, in my opinion, as a card game goes, but it's just right for those dudes. You load up with weapons and armor and whatever else, and you beat monsters. And, of course, the higher the level you are, the easier it is to beat monsters, and whoever gets to a level 10 wins. Now, I'm sure there's more. There's a billion spinoffs of this game, expansions to this game. They only have two, but wow. they do love playing it. And it's a, yeah, I'll be honest. I'll, play, I'll sit down and play a game with them. It, it is kind of fun. So, Munchkin, you need to play that one with them, brother. It's a really fun game. Uh, going back to some board games that we played back at our, in our childhood, uh, Memory. Remember Memory? You just had to match the yeah, yeah. ones. You mixed them all up and then flipped them over. And yeah, find a match one. Real memory. Classic game. Classic Memory. I remember uh, Bray, our brother, used to love Memory when he was a kid, when he was a little kid. And we play memory with him. Of course, he was always too stupid to figure out where the other one was, so I could always win. Actually, that same thing went for Jordan too. <laughs> I played them when they were little. Then when they got older and knew how to play, we stopped playing the game. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, there's Game of the States. Do you remember that one? 
it was the map of the U.S. and you were a truck driver and you had to pick up some kind of uh, produce like corn or oil no, or gold and ship it to the other side of the U.S. or uh-huh. whatever state capital they had. Uh, we played this game. I have it. Uh, we played this game and we loved it. We played it all the time. It was super fun. I, I bought it again. I was like, oh yeah, that game. I gotta have it. So I bought it and uh, played it with the nephews and everything. And it's a little different. It's really an educational game because you're supposed to see the what you know what their biggest import export is from that state. Uh-huh. You're also finding about state capitals. I it also see. gives you like little knowledge, like did you know fun facts on the cards. It's also a recruitment tool for truck drivers. I guess so, too. Yeah. It's that, too. But it's not as fun. I was a little bummed out. I was like, oh, this game was more fun as a kid. I didn't realize it was that. It was one of those learning. Learning is fun. I was having so much fun learning as a kid. Yeah. I didn't even know. Do you know? Do you remember that truck driver commercial? 1-800-555. Oh, five, what? Five, five, one. One. Eight, nine hundred. Empire. Yes, Truck I School Driving Academy. <laughs> it was Diesel Driving. Diesel Driving Academy. Yeah, that's what theme song plays. That's the, on the on the updated version of Game of the States. They should include that CD. Yeah. You can just pop it in and play that as you play the game. Fantastic. Uh, another game that uh, I remembered as a kid is Run Yourself Ragged. Uh, brother, I don't know if you remember this one because we didn't have it. I don't remember. But that one. one of my buddies did. It was a it was a steel marble, and you had to you had these little controls, and you had to bop it through this whole maze. You know, like balance it on this, roll it through that. Oh yeah. And you had to do it under a minute because the timer was ticking. Oh, and cool. if you did it before, you stopped it. Oh, it's super hard. Super intense. Super. Oh, it's super intense too. It's scarier than perfection. You know how scary perfection was. Ooh, perfection can get you hard problems. But Run Yourself Ragged, I almost bought this game, but then realized it's really just a one-person you know, game, kind of like Labyrinth, and I think I'd have more fun playing Labyrinth than I would play Run Yourself Ragged, but it is a fun game. Kind of like how you play that wooden uh, triangle game, the peg game, wooden peg triangle on the triangle oh, yeah. thing at the, at the uh, crack, crack, Crackle Barrel. Crack barrel. Yeah. And the, that, that little game's fun, but would you want it? Yeah, no, nah, you probably nah. wouldn't want your own. It's fun when you're sitting there at the table trying to figure out how you can get down to one peg. Have you did you ever get down to one peg? The only, only the closest I could ever get is two. No, I've gotten down to one. And I can get usually two every time. I, I can't get down to one though. I can't get down to one. I'm not a boss like that, but I can get down to two and that's about it. And they're so far apart. I'm like, oh man. As a kid, you just always cheated. Well, they get one more jump. <laughs> a super jump. This one got over here somehow. <laughs> Uh, another one is uh, bumper cars. Oh, I love bumper cars. Yeah, I completely really forgot about bumper cars. Bumper car. Uh, our grandmother had bumper cars, and our other brother Bray, uh, when he went up there to help clean out her house, brought back bumper cars to me. I have the exact the... game we played as kids. Wow. And guess what? The nephews love it. That is one of their favorite old games that we have. I will say that bumper cars was one of those games for me that. When I played it as a kid, it was awesome. And then when I tried to play it, go back and play it, it wasn't as cool. Really? But I'm having just as much fun because you roll two die. Uh-huh. You can move one car, that die count, and the other die, uh, another car, that other die count. If you roll doubles, you get to roll again, and so on and so forth. But, however, if you there are squares out there. There are many different colors. If it's on your color, you're safe. If you land on your color... If you do not land on your color and someone else does land on that color, they will bump you back to the beginning. It's aggravating. You're trying to make it across the board and into the garage, which is all in gray spaces, which means there's no colors. It means anyone. It gets harder. The closer you get to the garage, you know, garage it gets harder. Yeah. And so anyone can bump you at that point. And you have to roll an exact number to get into that parking space. So I'm four spaces away. I can, you know, move three, two, one. I can't move five. Right. Oh, you know, yeah, if I'm so one space away, I have right to roll there. a one. So, yeah, you have to roll a certain number. It's a fun game. Uh, like I said, the nephews and I, we play it a whole lot. And still fun. Still fun. They love it, too. Uh, some of the newer games uh, that we didn't get to talk about, and CJ didn't put on his top ten, uh, top five, Sellers of Catan. It's a very popular game. Have you ever played this one? No. It's one of the newer games. So, okay. It's a very popular game, and uh, you gather resources and whatnot to achieve certain goals. I have played it before. I think it's a fun game. Do I own it? No. 
Um, I don't because I don't know if I'd have that many people who always want to play. Like my type of friends, like CJ and whatnot, we love killing zombies, not gathering trees, stone, and whatever, wood, you know, food or whatever. Right. So for us, it wasn't as fun. It's still a good game. I would play it. Uh, there's another game I got called the uh, I played before called the Aven- Adventures, and the Adventures. Uh, there's a lot of movable pieces. Like, you're basically, it's an Indiana Jones game. And every time you roll the die, the walls get closer. Or this boulder moves down the alley, and if the boulder catches up to you, you're dead. If the walls close oh, in, yeah. you're dead. Or if you step on the wrong tile, and it turns out to be a hole, you fall, fall through, through, you're dead. Oh, that's cool. And so you're trying to gather up tre- treasure, be the first one out with the most treasure. Thing is, the more treasure you have, the slower you go. Mm. But... You'll get you'll win at the end because you have the most treasure. Off, yeah. But you can't be gathering too much treasure because everything's trying to kill you. If you stay too long, you're gonna die. Um, it is a really fun game. I thought about buying it, but it's one of those games where I think it would get old after a while. You know, like you'd maybe get the hang of it because it's the same way. You go basically the same way. There are some shortcuts, dangerous shortcuts you can take, but. I don't know. There doesn't seem to be as much strategy in that one. That would be fun every once in a while to play. But that's another game I have played before. Ticket to Ride is a very popular game that you see everywhere. Uh, It's the locomotive game. I love that game. Don't have that game. Dad would love that game, to be honest with you. It's just a fun Uh game. Have you played Ticket to Ride? I don't think so, no. Okay, newer games, a lot of people have it. This is what people call a gateway game, that and Sellers of Catan. It makes them realize that, hey, there's more out there than Monopoly. And I know we've been talking about a lot of games like Monopoly, but that's because we were looking at nostalgia. Now I'm trying to go into a little bit more advanced, and none of these games I'm talking about, I'm sure, are advanced. But uh, the last one I want to mention is Pandemic. Uh, Johnny Danger Step, our sponsor, because if you need it kept, called Johnny Step. Like God intended. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and he has Pandemic. Uh, I've always wanted to play it. I've always seen it around at the stores. Never bought it. And we played it. It's a great game. It's a co-op game. Everyone versus the virus. Uh the thing is, though, and here's why I didn't buy it. I'm, I'm teetering on whether I should buy this or not because I really enjoyed it. But the thing is, if you can figure out, there's a way you can figure out how to beat the virus. You just got to convince everyone else that your plan works. I figured out the strategy really quick on how to win. They were going, no, wait. I said, no, cause, because you have this, because each character you are has a special power. And you, you look at the draw on who you get. But once you assess you know, what special abilities we have, it's easy for me to figure out how to beat that game. Now, does that mean I didn't have fun beating the game? I love beating that game. It is a fun, fun game. And I would play some of the expansions on it too. But I don't know if I would buy it. I would love to play it because it is fun. I mean, you yeah. have a lot of fun. But honestly, you'd probably get annoyed because I'm going to start telling you, okay, no, you got to move this because only you can do this. And so later on, we'll move this and this and this and this. And it's like chess. you got to think about five, six steps ahead, and you can figure out, hey, this is our best chance to win. But those are some of the board games I didn't get to talk about last week that I wanted to. And Brother, you know, you, last time ahead. we spoke about Grundle's favorite board games. And oh, yes, know, yes, yes. On those board games was, of course, Mall Madness. Mall Madness was on get, there, yes. you get to run around and, and shop with a credit yes. card and buy all your dresses. Yes. And then, he of course, on, in his top five also was Dream Phone. Dream phone that was yeah. on the misses last week. Yeah, yeah. Hey, dream phone. Hey Tommy, you know. Yeah, and then of course, Grundle's all-time favorite is Girl Talk. Girl Talk. Girl Talk. He told you that. Yeah, yeah, and so he had to explain it to me because I'd never heard of Girl Talk or played Girl Talk, but basically it's a game of truth and dare where you get with your girlfriends and you talk and stuff, and it, you know sometimes. You might be like, no, I'm not going to take that truth. I'm going to do the dare. And you have to get a fake zit sticker on your face. Wow. Yeah. That sounds like a fantastic game. No wonder Grundle likes to play that game. Yeah, that's his game. I do have a question for you. Do you remember the game Hero Quest? Hero Quest. I've heard of this bell? game. Hero Quest, I think it's like a 90s game uh, when board games were pushing real hard. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I saw something about it, and it kind of reminded me of uh, early zombies almost, where you kind of go through these boards, 
Uh, it doesn't create, you don't create the board game and things, but you're fighting certain monsters and you're trying to like get to the end and survive. Right. I don't know. I just thought, I was wondering if you had ever played that because it looks pretty sweet and I'm kind of surprised that a house of boys never found ourselves playing Hero yeah. Quest. Yeah, now that, may, that game may be discontinued, which is why. There's like parts of the board that change, like secret doors, passage doors where like you see, place them there. and That kind of stuff would be cool. Yeah. And when I go to Gen Con this year, I'm hoping to find games like that, fun games, because I like, I don't necessarily like straight card games. So I'm not really interested in those as much as I would be. I, I like cards in games. But I also like pieces, <laughs> too. I like game pieces and tiles and whatnot. I like I like a lot of you know stuff in my game box. So anyway, that's that's I'll hopefully be finding some games like that uh, that we can play later on this summer, folks. It's a mixed bag today, and one of the things since I have brother here is we want to tell you back in the day. We had a song for every fast food restaurant out there. But you want to do the Wendy's first? Okay, yeah, we'll okay. start with Wendy's. Okay, Wendy's is a little heavy metal, so I'm just going to pretend I am slapping the bass. Get your frosty and your fresh fries and your slappy. Eat it real good here at Wendy's. Or you'll die. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we really didn't listen to that much heavy metal, but it seemed to fit Wendy's. <laughs> Are you ready for Burger King? You know, they should stick with that over what they're playing today. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. I like to see the little red-headed girls yeah. girl jamming needs, out to that song. That girl needs to go. All right, well, here we go. It's time... For Burger King. <gasps> whopper, 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 Fries. whopper, 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 Drink. whopper, 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 Sing that song when you're at Burger King. They will love you for it. <laughs> Especially while you're waiting in line. That's the other one. All right. Captain D's had a nautical tune, but I don't remember the lyrics. But I remember I used to love Captain D's song. Yeah. Ahoy there! You know, or something like I that. I would want to go eat at Captain D's just so we could sing the song. And not I, for know. The I know. Like, so, this fish is stanky, but I want to <laughs> sing the song. All right, so McDonald's. Are you ready? McDonald's, 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 McDonald's. McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Screwed that one up. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Why does McDonald's get a beautiful song and Wendy's get heavy metal? It's just so. Because it's a beautiful thing. Bring it here to you. All right, now the best song. I cry when I eat my The big best one. song is the country jam. Yes, country. I don't even like country. But Arby's is oh, a roast beef sandwich shop. Delicious. And this has got to be the best uh, song we ever came up with for Arby's. In fact, uh, we sing it while we're sitting down eating our Arby's, and we're very happy because I love me some Arby's. And I'll tell you how much I love it. Ready? Bow, 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 bow. I want me some Arby's sauce. I don't care how much it costs. No, I don't. Because roast beef and cheddar taste good together. I want me some Arby's sauce. Verse 2. I want me some Arby's sauce. I don't care how much it costs. Just me and you, my curly Q. I want me some Arby's sauce. I'm telling you, Arby's is going to hire us, and we're going to make millions off of that tune. I'm salivating right now just thinking about Let's it. Let's go to Arby's. Arby's! All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. We will see you next week on another Saturday morning Semo Flange. I know who I would like to slather in mayonnaise. Johnny Danger Step. Johnny Danger Step, where hair and nair never fare. <laughs> what does that even mean?